Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. This is part four of the Polistes Dominula European Paper Wasp Nest Development Series, documenting a complete season for this nest from the time it was discovered in May of 22 through November of 22. For the best viewing experience, you may want to check out our YouTube channel playlist to look at all the previous parts of this series prior to watching this particular section of the series. Let's begin with a five minute preview of this series. This video was shot in the USA, in the state of Indiana, and North America. In this series, we show you the entire life cycle of a European paper wasp colony. That's Polistes dominula. From the time it was discovered in May of 2022, when it had maybe a dozen new cells built, all the way through midsummer when it peaked in size with over 200 cells built on the nest, till the end of the nest life cycle in October, November of 2022, when it wound down and the population died off and flew off to mate. We'll show you the cell count that were visible during each of the growth stages it went through. It was fun to document how fast they were building out this nest. We'll show you all the drama these two co-founders queens went through as they defended their nest from predators of all sorts that wanted to eat their eggs or larvae or parasitize their nest. We watched them fight off spiders, carpenter ants. The ants in particular were very aggressive and they kept attacking the nest. You'll see this ant crawled right into one of the cells and tried to eat one of the eggs right there. The wasp turns around, sets off her alarm buzzing wings, and she grabs it by the leg and throws it right out of there. This was a very common occurrence. It was a daily thing, having to fight for their nest, fight for their territory. We couldn't help but be impressed at the number of times they used their wasp judo, just grabbing the leg or the antenna of the invader and just chucking it off the nest. There were parasitic wasps coming at them. They were always on alert and vigilant. They fought off mites and they fought off other types of insects that attempted to live in or around the nest. There's a whole related ecosystem of insects that target wasp nests and wasp larvae. We'll show you what it looks like when the wasp queens lay eggs inside the cells, which is what you see here. We'll show you all the life stages inside the nest, from the eggs to the newly hatched larva to the mature larva, all the way through to the pupating larva that become adult wasps when they chew their way out of the cell after pupation. And we'll also show you what it looks like when the pupating wasps who have developed through the egg and larva stage are born and chew their way out of the pupating silk caps that they cover their cells with. And we'll show you the process of how they go out to forage for wood fiber which they collect off of aged wood and they fly it back to the nest where they will inspect the nest and decide which cell they want to work on and they'll build each cell one at a time and they'll maintain any that need repair with that material. We'll also show you how they bring back insect protein that they hunt in the wild, they share it with each other, and they maloxate it, which means they chew it up into a fine pulp, and they use that food to feed their larva. And we'll show you that process in detail. You don't have to watch a wasp colony very long to find out what good biological control agents they are, reducing populations of insects around your property. Unfortunately, with invasive species, this goes both ways. It can be damaging to the local ecosystem if they're reducing the amount of resources available to our native wasps who rely basically on the same insect population to feed their larvae. We'll show you how they bring nectar back and create a honey-like substance for food. They also bring back water and they attach droplets to the cell walls to hydrate the nest and keep it cool. We'll show you the process of trophallaxis, which is where they engage in mouth-to-mouth -mouth exchange of fluids. You'll see how the two foundresses engage in dominance behavior, such as here, where they're nipping at each other and headbutting each other. And you'll see as the dominance hierarchy becomes established on the nest, the alpha female will shake her abdomen like a rattlesnake. And she'll sort of nibble at the heads of the others until they drop their antenna and bow down to the queen. And, and that's how they maintain dominance on the nest. And we'll show you examples of that. We'll show you how later in the season, 
the males begun to be born in the nest and the reproductive females who are going to be queens the following season after they hibernate they'll go out and start colonies so the goal of this video is to show you the complete life cycle of a polistes diminula nest the european paper wasp they're very very common now as invasive species here in north america you will probably see these this upcoming spring and summer so keep an eye out for these and we hope when you see them next you'll know exactly how they operate as always, we thank you for being here. We had a great time in the six months that we began the channel in 2022, and we hope to bring you a lot more fun content in 23. Here we'll step back in time to June of 2022 to pick up where we left off at the end of part three. We start episode four here on June 15th of 2022, and we have a 20 minute clip here. We're gonna reduce this for time by compressing it into just a few seconds worth of time so you can view the activity of the larva. Look inside each cell, and wherever there is a larva, you will see a lot of movement. And the purpose for this high speed clip is just to show you how much the larva move because in real time, you don't see them moving as often or as quickly as they actually do. They're moving constantly, and they move so that they attract the attention of the adult wasps who will come and feed them if they are the most active. And this is like similar to baby birds, really. It's, it's an activity that allows them to thrive as they develop as larvae and eventually get to the stage where they'll weave their silk caps over their cells and become pupating adult wasps. If you've been following previous parts of this series, you'll know that there's two foundresses, they're co-foundresses who started this wasp nest. One of them has become mostly the alpha foundress or the alpha queen. That means she'll stay on the nest most of the time and lay most of the eggs, while the other, the subordinate, goes out and forages for food and for nest building material. Now, since this nest was formed, we've had two wasps born in the nest. So you'll see those two wasps here in this episode. Those two newer wasps are so brand new that they haven't gone out much to forage. But on this day, June 15th of 22, they have become mature enough to begin going out on their own, flying off of the nest and learning how to forage for food and for nest building material. They are worker wasps, so they will be denied the opportunity to lay eggs or to be reproductive. Their job in life is specifically to help support the nest through foraging for food and for nest building materials. So we'll show you how they begin to understand their role on the nest and start making foraging flights in this episode. Here we see one of the foundresses come back with some food and share it with the others. And then they will begin to share that food with the larva. On the lower right you can see a wasp maluxating some of that food that was given to them and she will maluxate that food by chewing it up into a palatable soft paste and she will feed that to the larva you'll see her dip her head into the cells here and she's feeding the larva mouth to mouth the larva are capable at this point of eating fairly large amounts of protein pretty good chunks, meatballs basically created from the insects that are hunted in the wild by the foundresses and the foragers. But uh, the smallest of the larvae, they still have liquefied regurgitated proteins, but the larger larvae they'll eat pretty large, relatively undigested amounts of protein maluxated by the adults. And as you may know if you've watched the other parts of the series, Whenever the larvae are fed by the adults, they also produce a clear carbohydrate fluid, a sugary fluid of their own, that they then allow the adults to feed on. So it's a two-way exchange of food. The adults bring them protein, and they produce carbohydrates for the adults. So the adults will drink the fluid that the larvae produce. It's a very unique evolutionary partnership that encourages thriving on the nest and encourages feeding of the young so everybody gets something out of that deal. It's very, very interesting behavior where the babies feed the adults as well as the adults feeding the babies. 
Very few other examples of that I can think of in nature. But it's absolutely part of the reason why wasps can procreate so well and raise their young so readily. Here one of the co-foundresses returns with some more food and again begins to maloxate that food up on the upper left. You see her chewing that up. And here she shares it with the other wasp who then begins to maloxate it. And she will take that and feed it to the larva again. While she feeds the larva this time, take a look at the lower part of her body called the abdomen, where the stripes are, and see how she shakes it. She vibrates her abdomen often while she's on the nest, and she'll do this to establish dominance. It's part of the way she teaches the other wasps on the nest that she's the boss and she's the dominant alpha queen. It's also felt by the larva and the pupating wasps as they develop throughout their life on the nest. So they know that she's in charge. And all of these vibrations do have an effect on the developing larva. For example, when they researched antennal drumming, which is where the foundresses or the queens will drum their antennas on the larva or on the pupating wasps as they develop, that drumming results in a signal given to the larva that they're going to be raised as non-reproductive workers. There may be something similar going on with the abdominal shaking that you see when she's feeding the larva. There's also abdominal shaking shown as a dominance behavior toward other wasps to let them know who's in charge and who's dominant on the nest. So all of these behaviors that you see, they each have their own purpose and it's the job of the researchers to try to figure out exactly what those behaviors mean. Here we see one of the foundresses returning to the nest with some wood pulp. And this wood pulp is used to build a cell on the nest. She goes to work building that cell on the upper right side of the frame here in a moment. We'll show you that in high speed just so you get an idea what it looks like. It's a little hard to see because she was just outside the frame uh, that the camera could see. But you see her going back and forth, working that wood putty into the form of a new cell. As we speed up the clip here and move in a little bit on close-up, you can see the very edge of the cell that she's constructing here take shape. They make these cells taller and larger to accommodate the growing larva. So the shortest cells always have eggs in them. And then as the eggs grow into larva, they extend these cells to keep up with that growth. Here back in real time, you can see her cleaning up and grooming after she did her foraging and nest building. And the nest is very active. You see other wasps about ready to take off to go forage. First one off the nest in this clip that flies away is one of the co-foundresses, one of the old adult wasps who built the nest from scratch. But then you see the new wasps on the nest who were just born begin to get ready to fly and they are now just learning how to go out and forage. So you see all this activity where they're constantly moving around the nest and just about flying but not quite. They're just learning now on this day how to get off the nest and go fly and go out and forage and come back and what that's like. And the foundress on the nest keeps encouraging them to go. She'll come after them and push them and nudge them and continually attempt to get them to go out and forage. And this one here is off the nest. There you go. So now the only remaining wasp is the adult female alpha queen. And she'll spend most of her time like this on the nest, laying eggs, while the new workers go out and learn how to forage and bring back food and nest building materials. Along with the co-foundress, who is the subordinate, they will be the primary supporters of this nest from now on and the queen will mostly lay eggs. She'll also feed the larva, maloxate food as it comes in, and do general maintenance on the nest, but most of the foraging now will be done by the others. Here one of the foragers returns with some wood pulp, and she'll start building a cell here, so we're gonna speed that up, fast forward through that so you can watch the process in a little bit quicker time. If you look at the larva in the cell she's working on right now, you can see it's a mature larva. Therefore, it's going to need a taller cell, and she's working on that so it can then become a pupating wasp by spinning a silk cap over the cell, which the larva will do pretty soon here. 
Here we see the foundress in the red circle. She's going to walk over and exhibit some dominance behavior by drumming on the head of the other until the other produces some fluids for her through trophallaxis. This happens so fast, we'll slow it down for you here in slow motion. You can see when she approaches the other one and what that dominance behavior looks like when she does antennal drumming and batting of her legs on the head of the other until the other lowers its antenna and then produces some fluid. And the Alpha Queen will take a quick drink of that fluid, and that's called trophallaxis, and that's a big part of their communication and their dominance hierarchy behaviors. Here we see one of the newer wasps that was born on the nest just recently, returning from one of her first foraging flights. She's having trouble navigating the lens protector, the glass piece we have between the camera and the nest to protect the camera lens from any debris falling from the nest. So they try to return and they come back, but they get a little confused about how to get to the nest when there's a piece of glass in the way. The adults are able to navigate that because they've been dealing with that for quite a while. Now, once the new wasp makes it down to the nest, you see some dominance behavior here from the Alpha Queen. We'll slow that down for you and replay it here because it's worth noting exactly how this takes place. You see the Alpha Queen who's at the top of the frame noticing that the newer wasp is starting to do foraging runs, starting to become more independent. So she comes over and she pushes her head against the body of the wasp. She shakes her abdomen and she makes sure the wasp bows down and lowers its antenna to her. That's the alpha behavior that keeps her in charge of the nest as the dominant queen. So she'll routinely give these not so subtle reminders of her dominance to each of the adult wasps on the nest and all of the larvae and the pupating wasps that are coming up and developing in the nest also feel all of that vibration and they become aware of their cast as they're born into it through all of these behaviors. Here one of the wasps is engaging in a behavior called fanning where she flaps her wings very quickly as if in flight but she stays on the nest and that causes air to blow across all of the cells on the nest and that drops the temperature in the nest and helps regulate it. It's one of their thermoregulation techniques that really works well for them. That along with moistening the nest with water for evaporative cooling has a significant effect on dropping the temperature in the nest. Here we see one of the wasps returning with some wood pulp in her mandibles. She's inspecting right now the one on the lower part of the frame. She's inspecting looking for a spot to begin building. She chooses this spot to make a cell and she starts building the cell wall and we'll speed this up for you to watch the process. Wherever you see these new cells going in there will soon be a new egg if it's a brand new cell or there will be a maturing larva that needs the extra cell length. And here another adult returns. She's at the lower part of the frame now. Uh, she's inspecting, looking for a spot to build. And here she chooses a lower cell to begin constructing a new part of the wall. For comparison to the fast forward version, we're going to show you this in real time. Notice how the edge of the cell is a darker color. That's where she hydrates it by regurgitating some fluids while she's working with the wood pulp to build that cell out. And here we'll just watch her work while we listen to the ambient sounds of the neighborhood that they're in.
And here she finishes up building that cell and now she's off about her business. In the meantime, you can take a look at some of the life stages that are active in the nest right now. You see the adult wasps doing trophallaxis by putting their heads into the cells and having mouth-to-mouth -mouth contact with the larva. This is often done to exchange the fluids, as we've talked about before. And you can see also in this nest, there's some very immature larvae down in the cells below the larger larva, who are recently hatched and are still very tiny. And adjacent to them, you find a food store, a food deposit, which is wasp honey, which is nectar that they create uh, by collecting nectar off of flowers and honeydew off of plants and that kind of thing and coming back to the nest and regurgitating that nectar and storing it like honey in the cells. And the adults will eat that honey occasionally for energy. They don't tend to feed this to the larva, but they do use it for themselves. The larva get protein maluxated from hunted insects in the wild, but the adults will drink that nectar occasionally, that wasp honey that you see deposited in the cells. So they'll put food stores like that throughout the nest often. The food stores are usually in empty cells or in cells like this one where there's only still a tiny egg in that cell. You can just see the egg in the red circle here. Here one of the adults returns with some wood pulp and begins preparing that wood pulp to build with. And as usual they do their cell inspection by checking out every cell in the nest almost. They wander around looking for where they'd like to repair or build a cell. And once they pick a spot, they get to work. And we'll show you this here on Fast Forward so you can watch the process. So as you can see here in mid-June, it's very, very busy on this nest. It's a thriving nest. There's a lot of eggs. There's a lot of larvae. A lot of pupating wasps under their silk caps about to come out and help start foraging. And there's a lot of nest building going on all simultaneously. Here again, one of the new wasps has come back from foraging and is trying to navigate the lens protector glass. So she's kind of photobombing the scene while she tries to figure out what this glass is in the front of her nest and how to get back home when she lands on it. For the newer wasps who have just come out of pupation and beginning to learn how to forage and how to collect wood fiber and how to build a nest, it takes some time to navigate their environment. They're not nearly as quick at it and good at it yet as the adults who've been building this nest from the beginning. But as you'll see as this series goes on, they get good at it very quickly. And they all learned how to navigate the cameras and the glass lenses and the glass protectors, everything around their nest uh, that was not part of their wild environment. They got quite good at dealing with that, and soon everybody just ignored it and worked their way around it. And every now and then we'd have to put up umbrellas to protect the gear from the sun, or we'd have to put up different types of contraptions around the filming area, extra light or something, and without fail they just adapted to it. Here you see a wasp returning and you'll see some dominance behavior. Shaking of the abdomen, pushing it along the nest. This is all dominance behavior from the queen or the alpha explaining to the workers and the foragers that their cast is worker and they just need to get to work. Here's another look at the abdomen stretching where they stick out their stinger and stick out their venom sac occasionally. Here we see one of the adults return to the nest. We have this clip in slow motion so you can see it. She begins to make enough vibrations that she causes the others to pop up and they begin trophallaxis producing fluids to exchange with each other. Here we have another cell being built, so we'll speed that up for you so you can see that process quickly. Here we're about to see another example of dominance from the Alpha Queen toward one of the subordinates. She's going to solicit trophallaxis, meaning she's requesting fluid from that wasp and also drumming on its head and face with her antenna and her feet to let that wasp know it's a subordinate. We're going to replay that for you, blown up here and slowed down because this behavior is uh, always so important on a wasp nest. It's good to understand what they do and see it up close. So they exchange fluid twice and then she begins the antennal drumming 
on the head and sort of boxing with her legs till the other bows down a little bit. They exchange fluid again and then it's over. And all of that happens in just a blink of an eye, but it's so important and complex in their lives that it's one of those things that you really want to understand if you're studying these wasps. And here we have another example of trophallaxis. This time the dominant queen is on the left and approaches one of the newer wasps that was just born on the nest and they begin to exchange fluids. Pay attention to her antenna, the queen on the left, and how they tap the face of the subordinate to the right while they do trophallaxis. This antennal drumming, very important part of what they do to communicate. This trophallaxis or mouth-to-mouth -mouth exchange of fluids is common in the insect world with ants and with others, other types and other species of insects. This behavior is so multifaceted we're still learning about all of the different complexities that it involves and what it means. Here's another example of trophallaxis where one wasp returns to the nest and they immediately begin trophallaxis with one of the wasps on the nest. And this time where you normally see clear fluids exchanged, this time you see a very thick yellow fluid exchanged. So this would either be maloxated protein from insects caught in the wild, or it would be nectar of some type. A lot of people don't realize that wasps produce honey in the same way bees might. They just don't produce as much uh, and it's used slightly differently, but it's very common for them to produce and regurgitate a type of honey that they collect out in the wild as nectar, just like bees. So this thicker yellow fluid may be some type of honey, or it could be insect protein. Here one of the wasps returns with some food, and they share it with the adults, and then they go ahead and feed the larva after they maloxate that protein. This is insect meat collected in the wild and then chewed up into a fine pulp that they can feed the larva. And then the larva being fed will often feed the adult some of the clear fluid that the larva produced. So that two-way exchange of fluids and nutrition is something we see a lot. Here we have another ant attack. They were able to dart at that ant and scare it off this time. Sometimes the ants will get right on the nest and try to eat the eggs. So they're constantly on alert, looking out for that kind of attack. Here we have another sped up example of a cell being built when an adult came back with some wood pulp. Here we see a new egg attached to one of the cell walls. And you'll notice that as one of the wasps goes in to explore that cell, Another wasp turns immediately and begins some aggressive behavior, dominance type behavior, nipping at that wasp and seemingly trying to uh, get it away from that cell or at least interrupt whatever it's doing. This may be some type of egg protective behavior. It's unclear who laid that egg. At times it'll be the dominant queen laying most of the eggs, but sometimes one of the other wasps on the nest will lay an egg of its own and then the dominant queen will come over and try to get that egg out and eat it and replace it with one of her own. Here we see a wasp come back with some more wood pulp and begin building out another cell, lengthening one that's already been started down at the lower frame. We'll speed this up again for you for time, but it looks like it's building this one up to match the height of the one next to it. And notice how she uses her antenna for guidance on this. Her antenna go all along the sides of the cell while she builds it. It gives her full orientation. As you see here, there's always a lot of communication going on between all the wasps on the nest. It's kind of a constant thing that goes on throughout the day. Here, one of the wasps returns with a food delivery and shares it with some of the adults, and then they go ahead and feed the larva. Hands off the food to this wasp on the left, on the lower left, and that wasp carries on with the maloxation while the other one cleans up and then she leans into the cells and feeds it to the larva. As the larvae grow larger and there's more and more on the nest, it becomes very, very 
urgent, all of this feeding, and there's a lot more forage runs going, and all the wasps are busy all the time, supporting all those hungry larvae. Here we see a red mite approaching the nest. On this day, it was around the area quite often, and you'll see here in a moment, it attracts the attention of one of the wasps who attacks it and throws it away from the nest. You see it approaching at the top of the frame. Wasp chases it, grabs it, gets it in its mandibles, sets off its alarm wings. That's an alarm sound to alert everyone that there's a danger. It's still trying to malixate it and fight with it. Ultimately, it drops it and drops it away from the nest. Then cleans up. Here we see one of the wasps has returned to the nest with some wood pulp and she begins to construct a cell. So we'll watch that one in high speed. You can see she's increasing the height of the cell to match the mature larva in the nest, which will begin the pupation process pretty soon by weaving a silk cap over its cell and it needs that extra height for that purpose. Here we see the alpha foundress, our main queen, lowering her abdomen into a cell to begin the egg laying process. And this will take a couple of minutes. We'll watch it in real time. She's preparing the cell so she can attach the egg to the side of the cell wall. And she'll use body fluids to help sort of glue it to the side of the wall. The egg laying process usually takes about a couple of minutes to complete. And she's in labor now, getting very still, passing the egg from her body onto the side of the cell wall. And she'll do this in every single cell on the nest as a new cell is formed, or if a cell is vacated for some reason, through a pupation process of an adult wasp chewing its way out of a silk cap, she'll replace that egg as soon as she has the opportunity in that empty cell. Ultimately, she'll have an egg that looks like this one, and we'll show it to you here in the red circle in a different cell that will be attached to the side of the cell wall, and it will remain attached like that throughout the development of the larva, and it becomes detached at some point throughout the pupation process. We'll just show you this labor in real time, so it only takes a couple of minutes, and we'll let you hear the atmospheric sound of the neighborhood. You'll notice the wind is shaking the tripod a little bit, so the image will shift here and there. Here she finishes up the egg laying process and comes over to meet one of the foragers coming back. She'll meet every forager that comes back to the nest and she'll assess what that forager has. In this case it has some nest building material, some wood pulp, and it'll get to work here on building another cell momentarily. But the Alpha Queen is very aware. Is it food coming in? Is it wood pulp coming in? She kind of meets and greets everybody. And in this way she maintains control of what's happening around her all the time all the incoming nest support. She's fully aware of what's going on. Here we'll speed up another cell build for you. You can see the mature larva in this cell is going to be needing to pupate pretty soon. So as soon as this cell wall is extended high enough, it'll weave a silk cap. Here we'll skip ahead to the next day. This is June 16th of 22. You see one of the adult wasps up on the top right of the frame coming back and malixating some food that it had brought to the nest. And it will move over here and feed it to this larva as it bounds into the cell. And the larva at this stage, the mature larva, they can eat very large chunks of insect meat that's brought back. So the malixation process is done to soften up that meat for them, uh, but it can still take a very large chunk of protein whereas the developing larvae that are still very tiny, they'll take a kind of a more regurgitated fluid form of the protein. Here we see another food delivery where one wasp flies in with a chunk of insect protein in its mandibles. It hands it off to this other wasp here on the right, 
and that wasp takes it and begins the malaxation process on the nest and just chews it up into a finer pulp and from there goes ahead and feeds the larva directly. So as one wasp malaxates it on the lower right, the other wasp cleans up, that's the wasp up on the top, and then that wasp on the top begins trophallaxis with one of the other wasps. So you can see how in a eusocial wasp nest, there's just constant cooperation, constant contact, and everyone works together to make this nest thrive in the wild. Here you see a large ant stalking the nest. It's currently walking on the lens protective glass between the camera and the nest, but it works its way up toward the nest here, and they're very aware of it. They run it off by darting at it and staying alert. A few minutes later, it returns and tries to attack the nest again. And this time they're ready for it again. And the fight is on until they can run it off. Later on, another cell is built here on the upper left. So we'll show that to you in high speed. The nest is really in overdrive right now to grow and expand as fast as possible. In this clip, you'll see three behaviors happening simultaneously on the nest. On the upper left, you see a cell being built in the background just out of frame. And you also see on the center frame the wasp fanning the nest, using her wings to blow air across the nest for thermoregulation to help lower the temperature in the nest, which is very important for the developing larva and the eggs and the pupating wasps. She'll fan that nest throughout the day on any hot day, and they'll do that all season long. The third thing you see is she's very aware of some small parasites that are walking to the right of frame. These are bark lice. Sometimes they'll be tiny parasitic wasps, but you'll notice her antenna are up. She's very aware of what's happening there on the right side of the frame because they're constantly having to protect their nest and defend it against parasitic activity from these other small insects. So you see it coming up and she just tracks it the whole way ready to pounce if it comes anywhere near the nest. Here we see a food run returning with a very large chunk of insect meat that had been malaxated in the wild and brought back to the nest. The wasp hands it off to the one on the right who begins malaxating this large chunk of meat. It's basically a large meatball made up of a soft-bodied insect that the wasp had hunted and brought back to the nest. And now they break it up and sort of share this piece of uh, insect protein and they'll work on malaxating it together because it's quite large. And then they will begin feeding the larva these chunks of meat. And we'll watch this in real time because it's one of those things that in nature for a wasp colony is extremely important. The foragers come back, they share the food with the adults, the adults work together to break it down, they all end up feeding the larva. It's a super cooperative effort on these nests and it, it really helps the nest thrive this cooperative behavior. We'll speed up the footage a little bit while they malaxate the meal. It takes a little while for them to break it down. But then we'll move back to real time here and you'll see them begin to start to feed the larva. They'll go cell to cell wherever there's a larva that's mature enough to take meat of that consistency and they'll begin to drop bits of that food off mouth to mouth to the larva. And the larva are eating huge amounts of protein at this point. There's a lot of food activity on the nest, a lot of food delivery, a lot of foraging for insects because the mature larva eat a tremendous amount of protein. And then they'll use some of that protein to weave the silk caps that cover their cells during pupation. The larva create a gel-like substance in glands near their mouths that are filled with this protein-like gel that when it dries, the strands immediately harden into the silk that we see above their cells when they begin pupation. So the most mature larvae are actually in need of a very large amount of protein to help them begin that process. Here's some more food coming back to the nest. Again, a very large chunk of insect meat, protein that was just collected and hunted in the wild, brought back fresh, broken up immediately by the wasps, and then fed to the larva. And we'll show you that several times as it was a very busy feeding day we documented on this day, June 15th of 2022. Next couple of clips will illustrate what that looked like. And we'll speed that up for you a little bit so we can save some time here. So here you see them malaxating the insect meat. They're breaking it down into a fine enough consistency for the larva to be able to eat it and digest it. And as soon as they're done with that, they begin going cell to cell, 
feeding the larva, just as they did in the previous clips. It's a lot of work. They put in a ton of energy to get this done for all these larvae every day, all day. Here the forager returns again with more meat, probably coming from the same source, whatever large insect was attacked and killed. Uh, it keeps returning and bringing back more parts of that meat. Giant meatballs they actually fly around with. They can carry a lot of weight, actually, with these large wings that they have. That's enough power in the air to be able to handle picking up entire insects, attacking them, killing them, breaking them up, and flying back with a lot of the meat. We'll speed up the malaxation process here, which they, they both take part in doing. And you can see how efficiently they knock that meat down. They ingest the fluids from it, and they'll later regurgitate some of that to the smallest larva. And then they'll take the larger meat chunks and give that directly to the bigger larva. It's a little challenging with the camera angle, but if we zoom in enough, you can see the larva being fed directly some of these larger chunks of meat and actually chewing that meat up and trying to consume it. Uh, it's not terribly clear footage because we're blowing up pretty hard, but uh, you can see some of that meat in the mouth of the larva and the larva eating it. And uh, this is how they are fed throughout the larval stage. They get increasingly larger chunks of protein to consume. And if you look back in our playlist at some of our previous videos where we show some close-up footage of larvae consuming meat like this, it is kind of comical. They, they are basically just huge mouths. That's what these larvae are at this stage, and they just gulp and gulp and gulp as much food as is brought to them. And that's how they begin turning into mature larvae that can then pupate without eating for weeks at a time and emerge as adult wasps. So they eat a tremendous amount of food at this point to prepare for all that. Here we have another example of the fresh meat delivery and how strong they are carrying these large, large food loads back to the nest and how efficient they are at getting these broken down and fed to their young. We'll speed up the clip here for time as they malixate the meat and prepare it for the larva and then we'll try to get some shots of the larva being fed. Initially you have all three wasps breaking down that large meatball. One begins feeding the larva, the other two keep going on breaking that down. And it takes a fair amount of time to do this, so we just speed it up for that reason. Hopefully you can still get a good idea of, of the process here. Now we'll move it back to real time and take a look at some of the larva being fed. And you won't see these larvae for very much longer. Pretty soon the larvae being fed here in the, in the ring around the center. Uh, you will find them covered with their silk caps in the next couple of days because they're getting old enough now that that won't take long and they will soon be covered up. Here we have another large food delivery. Looks like the remains of what used to be a green caterpillar or something like that. And they all get involved in breaking this down and feeding the larva. We'll go to field audio for a minute while we watch them.
Here's another example of dominance behavior on the nest where they attempt to show the other wasps on the nest who's boss by getting them to lower their antenna to them. And whoever gets the other to lower their antenna and bow down would be the more alpha of the two. Here we have some more good examples of trophallaxis where they exchange fluids mouth to mouth. And this may be dominance related behavior as well. So you may find them grappling for dominance on the nest at this time. Here we have a new cell being built on the nest on the upper right. This wasp went out and foraged for wood pulp and brought it back to the nest. And we'll fast forward this for you to show you the building process in high speed. Here's a dominance behavior called mauling, in which the dominant wasp will come after this submissive wasp, the subordinate, and sort of nip at its body, not trying to hurt it, but it'll, it'll definitely make it uncomfortable enough to the point where it'll be driven off the nest to go and forage or be forced to go and do some type of work on the nest. It's a, basically the alpha wasp telling the subordinate wasp, I'm the boss, you're going to do what I tell you. If you're not working, I'm going to make you uncomfortable enough that you have to leave and go work. So the alpha foundress or alpha queen will do this to the other wasps on the nest at various times just to remind them all of who's in charge and what their role is on the nest. See how she'll put her body on top of the other one that's called mounting. She'll just make sure that she's got the dominant posture at all times. And ultimately the other one is driven away, but she doesn't leave it alone. It's not done until the Alpha Queen decides she's done with this behavior. She'll drive that other wasp off until it goes and forages or goes to work and keeps supporting the nest, which is the ultimate goal of that behavior. And as you'll see here, that is the goal. She continues to go after the other one until the other one leaves the nest, physically leaves the nest to go and forage. So this is a vital behavior on the nest. She must be constantly in charge of making sure everyone else is working so that this nest will thrive. A few minutes later, the whole thing happens again. So you can see the repetitive nature of this and how eventually it becomes very clear to each wasp on the nest what their job is and what has to get done. Later on the same day, there was another ant attack, one of several that happened in a row later in the afternoon on this day. As you can see here, the ant is crawling up into the cells looking for tiny larvae or eggs to steal and eat. And it will immediately do that until it gets discovered by the wasp who grabs it, throws it, chases it off the nest, sets off her alarm wings, lets the others know there's an attack happening. And they're chasing it around the nest until it is thrown off the nest physically by one of them that grabbed the leg and tossed it. Now they all have their alarm buzzes going and they're looking for more threats, but they got them. The ant is gone. Here's a slow motion replay of that amazing wasp judo, where the wasp darts at the ant, grabs it by the leg, and just physically flings it off the nest. They're amazingly fast at this. Here the ant, or another one like it, returns, and they set off their alarm buzzes and they dart at this one and get rid of it as well. A few minutes later, it's back and they're all on guard ready for it again. Clearly this ant has a hungry nest of its own to support, so it keeps coming at them. Here it comes back, attempts again, despite all of the defenders, tries to get on that nest, but they run it off. Just goes to show you how brutal it is out there in nature, 
where in order to live, you have to kill. In order to kill, you have to fight. In order to fight, you have to have enough population on the nest that is well fed to defend it. The whole thing is cyclical and it never ends. In order to survive, you got to be tough, you got to be scrappy, and all of that is a genetic and instinctual roll of the dice. Polistes Dominula just happened to be fortunate enough to be really, really well adapted to their new environment as invasive species. Here in North America, in the USA in particular, they're really doing well. Here the ant makes yet another run at the nest. They're on guard and they chase it off again. Here we'll skip ahead to the next day, June 17th of 2022, just to show you a profile view of the nest as it looked on that day. Uh, you often forget, looking at the other footage, that it's hanging upside down this nest from the eaves of a barn. And when you see it in profile, the shape looks almost entirely different than you might imagine when you're seeing it from underneath, when it all looks round and relatively flat. So the three-dimensionality of this nest is important to remember. So despite what it looks like from underneath, the wasp world is really an upside-down world. The wasps hang upside down all day long. The larvae live upside down with their heads facing the ground. And it's just an entirely different orientation than we're used to seeing. So from the view underneath, here on the 17th of June, 2022, what you may notice right away is that there's another empty cell where there used to be a pupating silk cap. That means one of the new wasps, who is a brand new pupating adult, has chewed its way out of the silk cap. And that new adult could be any of those that you see active on the nest now. This is assuming that that new wasp survived. Sometimes they get killed by the other wasps, or sometimes they're already deceased inside the cell due to parasites or due to disease. It would be a good guess to think that this one in the red circle is the new wasp on the nest, the most recent one to hatch out of the silk cap, because it climbs back in head first and stays in the cell. Most of the new wasps will do this pretty often. Here we see another wasp that was out foraging return with some food and hand it off to the wasp on the nest, to Maloxate, who will then feed the larva. Here she leans into a cell and she gives that bit of food to the larva. As she maloxates it a little bit more, she might share it with some others as well. Notice that she continually shakes her abdomen like a rattlesnake off and on while she's feeding the larva while she moves around the nest. Some researchers suggested that this behavior signals to the larva and to the other wasp on the nest that she is the dominant queen and they will be workers. Here one of the dominant foundresses returns to the nest with some food and she shakes her abdomen quite a bit as she pushes the other adult wasps around the nest. And again, this is just dominance behavior, letting them know she's up above them on the hierarchy and they must follow her command. Here another forager returns to the nest and builds a cell down to the lower right of the frame and we'll show you that in high speed here. This day, June 17th of 22, was very busy. A lot of building, a lot of feeding, a lot of activity on the nest. And we'll show you another cell being built here in high speed in this next clip. This one's down in the same area of the nest and starts being built out by a wasp that just returned with some wood putty. Here one of the foragers returns with a sizable chunk of insect protein. She hands off the meatball to the wasp on the nest who then maloxates this meat and gets it prepared to feed the larva. You'll notice these wasps are incredibly efficient at taking a very, very large piece of raw meat and breaking it down into the fluids they ingest themselves and the small bits of meat that they feed the larva. Here we see two of the other adults on the nest engage in trophallaxis while the other maloxates that meatball, gets it ready for the larva. You'll see they exchange kind of a thick yellow-green liquid and this is either regurgitated protein or some type of nectar. It's most likely a protein base because what you see here is they both then feed the larva. And the larva will generally eat just protein and in exchange will produce a clear carbohydrate fluid that the adults will then drink as well. 
Malaxation of the protein that comes into the nest from the hunting that they do in the field takes a lot of energy. So here you see them sharing that meatball and they both then begin to malaxate parts of it before they feed it to the larva. This helps share the energy required on the nest. This also helps ensure that all the adults on the nest do get some nutrition from this as well because the, the adults do ingest some of the protein even though most of it goes to the larva. And of course there's a lot of water content in all of these insects that they hunt in the field. So the wasps get a lot of liquid nutrients and hydration from the malaxation process. Here we'll see them feeding the larva. They give a little bite to several of the larva in these cells. These will be the ones that cap off their cells pretty soon with silk. So they get the bulk of the food that comes in because the goal of the wasps is to raise these up and get them working as soon as possible. So they get a little bit more food than would smaller larvae at this stage. Here we see them defend the nest against another ant attack. They set off their alarm wings and they run that ant off. Here we see the foundress preparing to lay an egg on the nest and she's getting her cell ready where she'll eventually put the egg right up against the side of the inside wall of the cell. She's preparing that cell now and she will soon lower her abdomen in and then pass the egg on into the cell. She takes about two or three minutes to get this egg finally laid. She comes in and out of the cell a couple of times just to get prepared, but then she goes into labor and she stays there for a couple of minutes. So we'll watch this in real time and just let you watch the process. This clip also offers a good look at the other wasp going through its grooming ritual, which is interesting to watch. They have to do this many, many times throughout the day to keep the nest clean, keep their bodies clean as they're going in and out of the nest all the time, in and out of the field all the time, hunting, feeding, malaxating raw meat. So they have to be very careful about being clean. And so the wasp on the left is going through that whole cleanup process while the one on the right is laying an egg. Here she finishes up laying the egg and now she's inspecting the cells, inspecting her new egg and making sure everything looks good for this new life. Here the foundress greets one of the new workers who just returns to the nest after being out foraging. This wasp doesn't seem to have any food or any nest building material, uh, but it does do trophallaxis, so it may have collected nectar out there, but it's still brand new, so it's still learning how to do this. Go out and collect and try to forage for the nest. In this clip, we were fortunate enough to be able to document the very beginning of a wasp chewing its way out of the silk cap. Keep your eye on the cell in the red circle. You're going to see the very tips of the mandibles, which is the mouth parts that squeeze and bite, poking up through that silk cap. This is the process of that wasp beginning to chew its way around the entire cell to get out and emerge as an adult wasp after pupation. The other wasp on the nest is an adult wasp already and she reacts to this. She goes over and checks it out. There you see the mandible starting to poke through while it's chewing on the silk. The foundress comes over and takes a look and she's very aware of when these wasps begin to come out. 
So we'll show you this in real time while the pupating wasp that is now an adult and ready to emerge works her way around the inside of that cell, cutting away that silk with her mandibles. And once it's gotten cut away enough to allow her to poke her head up through, you will see a wasp being born. And we've seen the egg laying process, so you'll now see the end result of that process, which is this pupation completed. We'll speed up this part of the clip uh, just to save some time, but basically what's happening here is the wasp inside the cell is just chewing and chewing and chewing to free up her silk cap, and as soon as she's able to complete that process, uh, we'll slow it back down again, and you can see the wasp emerge from the cell. But during this period, we'll just speed it up for time. You can see the new wasp inside the cell begin to push her antenna out and her antenna are the most sensitive organs on her body and they provide her with all of the sensory input she needs to continue. Here we'll slow it back down to real time and you can watch her emerge from the cell. And you'll notice by instinct she crawls out of her own cell and she sees an open cell and immediately crawls into that one. This is an instinctual behavior we see a lot with brand new wasps. It's unclear exactly why they do this, but it may be the instinct is to immediately look for food inside those cells. You'll see she just went down and went face to face with a larva when she pulled out of that empty cell. And she can actually drink the fluid that the larva produce. So it may be an instinct to immediately go into a cell seeking food. Here she's drying her wings, stretching out. She appears to be perfectly formed. This should be a really good, healthy, active worker. And she's part of that first generation of worker wasps that will really push through the rest of the subsequent generations, which will ultimately end up with the fertile queens for the next generation beyond this nest, and also the males who will go out and mate with all the new queens. The end goal for any nest is to make sure those reproductives are born so that they can carry on their genetic makeup into the next generation of nests to follow in different seasons. Later the same day you can see here where one of the adults starts to chew away the remains of the silk cap to get that cell prepared for a new egg. We'll speed this footage up for you. You can see where she pulls away that piece of silk that remains on top of the cell. And then she discards it, lets it fall away, and then she just cleans up the edge of the cell. And then she's done. Later that same night, as we were starting to lose light, another attempt to lay an egg by one of the adults on the nest in the cell that had just been used to lay an egg by the primary foundress. Now, due to the light issues, we couldn't get a crisp image of this, so we're not sure which wasp this is exactly, but it, it may not be 
our foundress, our primary alpha queen. And this happens sometimes. Every now and then another wasp on the nest will attempt to lay eggs. And when they do, if the primary foundress, the alpha queen, finds out, she'll take that egg, she'll eat it, and she'll replace it with one of her own. So at this point we're not sure who this is, but uh, it could be any of the adult wasps on the nest. If it is the primary foundress again, and she would have three dark marks on her face, or her clipius, which is why we call her Three Dot as her nickname. If this is Three Dot, then she's just laying another egg in the same cell by instinct, even though she just did that earlier in the day. But if it is one of the other wasps, that egg will probably be found and disposed of. As she finishes up her labor here, I will let you know that at this stage, at June 17th, 2022, this nest now has at least six wasps on it. So that means there's two co-foundresses that originally started the nest together from scratch. And then we've had four born healthy that survived and chewed their way out of their silk caps after pupation. And we'll show you those six wasps here in a moment. We were able to see them all in the nest uh, later this same evening. So at this point, the nest is doing fine. The first generation of very early workers have been born. There's a number of pupating adults that are about to come out. So it's fun to see this first generation being born one after the other, and the nest is starting to grow. And as you can see here, they waste no time in refilling those empty cells that have been vacated with new eggs. One wasp or the other will definitely get that job done in a pretty short amount of time. So we can't see inside this cell that she's laying the egg in, but there may be two eggs now in that same cell, or maybe one of the eggs has been eaten by a competitor, and now there's only one in there. Either way, she's all done now, checking out her egg, making sure it attached to the side of the wall okay, and we'll see how it goes from here. Later in the evening, just before it was starting to get dark, we were able to see all six of our wasps on this nest. And you can count them here. We'll freeze the frame for just a second. So in this shot, we see one, two, three, four, five, and six. And the two newest ones are most likely the ones with their heads in the cells because they like to kind of hang out inside the cell with their abdomen sticking out um, when they're brand new on the nest before they start foraging much. So the guess would be those are the two that were the most recently hatched and chewed out of their cells. So because we started this nest with two foundresses who started it from scratch, we know only four of the wasps on this nest were actually born in the nest, but we have six empty cells. These empty cells were the ones that were pupating wasps who chewed their way out of the silk caps, and we know that one of those was pulled out and eaten by the other wasps. You may have seen that incident in the previous episode, which was part three, but that leaves one pupated cell that was vacated, it's unaccounted for, so we don't know if that was one that was born healthy, or if that was a wasp that was killed, or somehow did not survive pupation, or if it's just there, but we can't see it. Maybe it's hiding on the other side of the nest right now. Trying to get an accurate count of how many are actually born and survive pupation based on the head count can be a little challenging. Obviously they all look very, very similar. They often have different markings on their faces, but some of them have no markings on their faces, several of them, and that makes things challenging because they all look almost identical. So this wrapped up footage for June 17th. For now, we've reached the end of part four. We thank you for being here, as always, and we appreciate your support. Have a good one.